One, two, three, four, five. Shazam! Look, long time no see. Yeah, been a while, dude. You enjoying your PlayStation, right? Yeah. So, what are you what are you playing right now? Like, what uh, what's just, your current game? I just com I just completed the main story of Final Fantasy sixteen. Already? How many hours yeah. did you put in? Uh, I could go check. Ballpark. Uh, yeah, we are an hour or two away from electing the new mayor for City of Toronto. God bless him or her because <laughs> it's a bad time to be mayor of Toronto. We uh, get a billion dollar deficit, uh, crime, transit, all kinds of problems. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. I voted for Saunders, though. I'm all about more cops. So, uh, thirty-one at thirty-one hours. Thirty-one hours. Oh, damn, man! How how long have you had the game? Since Thursday. Oh, damn, man! You you plowed through that. You played that the way I played uh, FF uh, Final Fantasy, like three, like or Chrono Trigger. I mean, we're talking NES. Uh, actually, that'd be Super NES. Super NES days, and uh, I would just spend like uh, like four, five, six hours a day just playing. Cause I love those. I mean, they were you know was it sixteen or thirty two big games at the time. Hey, yeah. JB, Shazam, no. say hi to Greg. I didn't put up the names because he's really tiny. <laughs> and, <laughs> And I don't want to clutter up my screen with all the names. Uh, now I'm waiting for. Whoa, whoa, sorry, JB, you got nine hundred. You're you're almost at nine hundred subs. Damn, man. Awesome. Keep now it up. I'm wait, now I'm waiting for Spider Man Two to come out. Spider Man. What do you mean, Spider Man Two? What? Uh. For the PS5. Oh, oh, game, game. Okay, I'm sitting there like, what? Well, I saw the. I um, have you seen the uh, trailer for Craven the Hunter? No. Dude, it looks good. It looks good. Like, I, you know, I'm not a big fan of the fact that Sony still gets to make any Marvel movies, but Craven the Hunter looks surprisingly good. And uh, early next year, Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two comes out. So what? What? What are they going to do? Remaster it? It's uh, it's a full on remake. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I guess I can't judge it till I see it. But um... hmm. I mean, I, ho I hope it's worthy because the thing is, the Final Fantasy titles, they have to live up to, you know, a certain like stature. Yeah, they're going to eat up your life for a while, but the, the cinematic quality is there and the storytelling. And... But for me, once they move beyond that kind of... Um, like at where I came in on it, like at the Super NES level. Once yeah. they moved beyond that and went like 3D and some of that, like it kind of left me behind. Like the beautiful games, don't get me wrong, but it's like that's kind of when I fell out of it. Because there's definitely something I like. Um, I don't know. For me, the classic RPGs, you know, it's just where it's at. Like I, I'm still playing. You give me a Chrono Trigger update or an update based on ff3 or something and i'd be all over that uh, right now they're talking about remaking final fantasy 6 really yeah which you know that's a great way to bring us old guys back um by remaking stuff that you like um 
Oh, what's what's JB asking? Are you going to get the gunship? I am. Whoa, 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 whoa! Gunship? I'm a little out of sorts. I've been busy with real life. Is what is it? A new play scale gunship? Or the UCS one? Oh, I got the UCS one. Do I not have it up here right now? Mm. I don't have it in the background right now. I I suspect it would be a new play scale one. Is that correct, JB? Let's see. Get response. Right now they're the vendors in for they're going to be coming out in the fall. Is that a for sure? It's, it's a rumor, though. Well, I mean, I expect three UCS sets this year, and we've had one so far, right? So, you know, basically, it'll really have to suck for me not to buy it. Uh, there's a leak that there's a new Coruscant uh, barred gunship with Fox. Oh, Commander Fox? Play scale. Okay. Um, if it looks really cool, maybe. But I'm definitely buying less and less Star Wars stuff, so I'll, I'll judge that when I see it. it. I won't buy it for the figures alone, so it's going to have to really look sweet. And really look, I mean, it's going to have to look a lot better than the one I built a couple years ago. Um, which was an older one, by the way. I mean, that was, God, what year was that set? I can't even remember now. I want to say like a 2013 or a 2015 set, but I don't even remember. Uh, da, da, da. I am sometimes surprised that these Speed Champs figures don't go up in value more than they do, but they don't. Considering they're pretty much all guaranteed to have unique prints, you know? Hmm. Like I'm looking at this, I get it, no side prints and all, and you know barely a back print you get one on the tour right. so but it's like it's a really nice print and then when you look at it in a certain light you can see all the details on his uniform like it's really really sharp the really, most really sharp the most bland speed champ minifigure i got is the lamborghini's one you think so because they're they're the same oh okay i get that They'll probably make Wolf sometime in a few years. Well, I think they definitely clued in that it's time to give us all the clones that everyone's been wanting. Stop pussyfooting around, you know? So. But don't be a cheapskate. Yeah, don't be a cheap. Well, I mean, it, they're leaving money on the table. People have been asking for it. Just give it to us, you know? There's no reason not to. There's plenty... It's not like, oh, well, they got to hold back on certain Star Wars content because there isn't going to be enough other content. It's like BS. I mean, how many different TV series, you know, and even if Alkalite was canceled, which, you know, which is a rumor, you uh, got Ahsoka coming. I mean, you've got the second season of um, Andor that's coming. Um, and, and people, it's funny, Andor is probably the first Star Wars anything that people feel is written for adults. It's not catering to the kids. It's not catering to, for toys. It's not doing any of that stuff. It's just a smart, you know, politically driven adult kind of Star Wars drama, which didn't appeal to everyone. But if you watch and or through, I, and I think people who look at it critically can appreciate it, at least on that level. That they try to write for an adult. Oh, this is my it's my upgrade controller right here. Oh, slick! Looks like a stormtrooper, huh? A little bit. <laughs> it, a little the, bit. Here's the default one. So, which one you like better? This one, all the way. Yeah. Mm. I used to like to customize. See, back in the original Xbox days, um, when we were we were taking our Xboxes apart, so we're modding the inside, right? Putting the mod chips in, 
so we could copy games, backup games, do all that stuff, have our own loaders, do all kinds of great, great stuff, put the games on the hard drive. Um, but then some of us started to take the top shell and the big green jewel that was on the original Xbox. Um, if you were careful, you could pop it off. But what most of us would do is we would put it in the freezer, let it sit for an hour, bring it out, and then we could pop the jewel off real clean and easy. Then you'd carve a little hole, and then you could put like LEDs in there. Some of my friends would make acrylic circles and inserts and... Um, Oh my goodness. I wonder if I had it. Man. Are you going to get Starfield? Probably not. I'll buy Diablo before I buy Starfield. And I'm probably getting closer to that idea of buying Diablo. I love Diablo. Diablo 4 is the first one I haven't committed to. Um, you gonna you're gonna make sure you get that too. I don't know. I mean, so it's like, I think it's 99 Canadian for base and 129 Canadian to get the full thing with the season pack and whatever uh, bonus garbage they're gonna throw in at the beginning. I don't know. That's a lot of money. I'll play it and I'll beat it. I'll beat it on whatever the preliminary level is, easy or whatever they call it. Um, and I'll play it for a while. I generally don't beat it on the secondary or harder levels um just because it there's no real payoff for me i play it once because i like it and i'm usually happy with that but i mean i've never played a diablo game and hated it i played all the diablos i even played diablo on mobile i also played it on the pc that was interesting Whoa. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, so I'm just checking in on my mayor's election here. We desperately don't want Olivia Chow to win because she wants to tax us an extra 20% easy, maybe even more. Um, right now, with 600 out of 1,451 polls in, she's a close second. So mm. it's still up for grabs. My guy's coming in third. I would like him to win, but I'm okay if he doesn't, as long as Chow doesn't win, because she's going to tax us to death. She thinks that people who have just bought homes, and by the way, that's not an easy thing to do in Toronto, given we're one of the most expensive places you know, to live. Um, oh, there's room. We could tax more. It's like, no, people are going bankrupt left, right, and center, you cow. Um <laughs> uh, yeah she's also um a new democrat which is um uh, in canada yeah. the new democratic party you can tie them back to the socialist yeah. communist parties so it's like i don't want them to get in because they're going to bankrupt us so it's like uh, like Oh, 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 hang on. We're going to bring Ken on. <sighs> hang on, Ken. i got to figure out how to bring you on. Uh, hmm. That is so odd. Oh, I have to add an item? Oh, look at that. Okay, that's how we do that. And actually, what I'm going to do is switch to Phil. Hey, Kenny. Hey. I almost can you hear me? On here. Yeah, I can hear you great. Hey, cool, cool. And save and update. And the world should see you now. Shazam. Oh, my God. You, they killed Kenny. Yeah. I hate that show. <laughs> you hate God, South Park? Really? I hate that show. Oh, uh, okay. What about Simpsons? What do you think of Simpsons? Oh, I like Simpsons. Really? Okay. Well, people don't want to kill me in the Simpsons. <laughs> oh, I get it. Okay, I'm a little sorry. right. Okay. It's the same thing as as the chicks, or as they were known in the '90s, the Dixie Chicks. Oh my goodness! They hated. Okay, they made when, that when, one song. When, the, when the middle one, when the the lead voice, when she spoke out against the president, 
Yeah. Like, wow, did she just kill their career? I mean, yep. I'll never forget. That. Well, and I, I love. Yeah, this spoke family. out against I the really war in did. Iraq. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, my brother hates them. He cannot really? stand them because they oh. made the song. They made that oh. song. Earl's Earl's got to die. My brother's name is Earl. Oh, dude, that song is hilarious. I'm sorry, but that song. Yeah. I mean, and I couldn't believe that song was getting airplay. And it's like, wow. But I mean, I thought the song yeah. was brilliant, but I was still shocked that it got airplay. Um, well, I no, guess I just, he didn't like it. I, I came <laughs> on to promote the butt of it. I'm sure he, it was the butt of everyone's jokes for a while. It's like everyone wanted to play that song for him. I stepped in to, I just stopped in to, to promote Bricks in the Six again. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Time. How, many, how many weeks now? What do we got left? Uh, it is on the 20, 20th to the 23rd. So we're just under a month. Yeah, tick tock, tick tock. And in, I've been really doing a big push over the last, I don't know, last four days. I processed so much stuff and I bought these boxes. Let's see if I can find them. Uh. Sorry to hear that, JV. JV's having power problems. Oh, yeah. There was a huge thunder and lightning storm here in Kingston. It was bouncing it around all day today out in Mississauga. Like, yeah, we, we actually we heard a transformer blow somewhere in our area. We're lucky it didn't take our building out. Oh, yeah. yeah. The only rain three times this week. Oh, it's been raining and plenty, but the humidity is what's killing us, not just the rain. Like, oh, I don't mind the rain, it's just the constant humidity has been horrible. Oh, oh, please, you should be down here. <laughs> well, no, because for me, like, rain comes, goes, done. I'm happy with it. Uh, when the humidity sticks around, uh, whatever that barometric changes, you know, going up or down, that really messes with me and um, does nothing for my migraines. Like, it's just horrible. Hurts my knee. And it hurts your knee, yeah, and, and oh, joints and stuff. Well, yeah, just, I'm, just I'm fortunate that my I left knee didn't bother my joints much, especially with all the broken bones I've had so far. Yeah. Wood. Um, well, I, I dropped a motorcycle on my knee in 93. Oh, Oh was it Harley? And no, just a hunt. I had a no. What was it? Kawasaki? No. Oh, yeah. No man. Suzuki. So the election is two thirds over. Baleo is ahead by mm, seven thousand votes. That's not a lot. Election where? Toronto. Oh, for the mayor? Yeah, I remember Tory had oh, yeah. to step down because he had the uh, extramarital affair with his. Uh, Underling, really? Yeah, they're gonna make a guy st after after after. Uh, Most of us would have. I I would have looked the other way, because as far as I'm concerned, he did a fair enough job. But the fact that it was an underling, like what he does with but, his marriage, he wants to try. Wait, 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 wait. After Rob Ford and everything that, <laughs> after Rob Ford and everything he did, they're gonna hammer on this guy for having an affair. Well, well, no, but that makes really it worse because he was such a harsh critic of Ford during, you know, crackhead. Well, uh, Ford okay, days. yeah, but I mean, you know what? Like, I mean, you look at some of the stuff that Ford was doing, and then he dies from pancreatic cancer, and you're going, "I know." Oh, it was, that might that might explain a few things. Yeah, Does, doesn't condone it, but no. does explain a few things. I so. really hated when when he did pass. You know, um, we went to his um, um, picnic. Out in Scarborough, uh, right? What was that? Friday, Friday night, uh, for du you know Dougie, because um, they still throw those picnics. And um, right. the first thing out of my wife's mouth, oh yeah, we're paying for it. Uh 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 uh, no, that's out of the Ford money, man. They've been doing that forever. Oh, yeah. Um, you, you know they got the printing <clears throat> business and the other businesses. Like, trust me, they're doing fine. Oh yeah. Um, so. Uh I got tired of like you've been to my booths at these these live shows that I do, right? Yeah. And I've got all my stuff set up and I get tired of of how I was displaying some of my used stuff, like dimensions, the dimensions packs. Yeah. Just in, in Ziploc bags. 
So what I did was I, I bought a bunch of these. Do they move, though, at all for you? Like Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. If they, I think they would do better. So I bought these tiny, but I can put it. I got a lot of small sets that I can put in, in this. Right? Sure. And then for the next size up. I'm like, guessing they're not expensive, right? These ones. Um, about anywhere from 65 to a buck and a quarter really for, nice. for a box, okay. right? I so, mean, it looks like it's a good box for sure. Oh, yeah. So I can put other decent sized sets in there. And then... So how do they know what's inside? I I print a picture on them. Okay. I'll print, I'll print, I'll print a picture of the... Uh, like, for example, if it was... If it was this set, yeah, I'll just I'll print a picture that I get off of the internet, and I just tape it to the top of the box, right? Cool, cool. And then I put a sticker on it. And, hey, so, for that one there, it looks like you then, just zip lock it together yeah. and be done with it. And then this that one, that manual will look like it fit nice on the outside of the box. And yeah, I've got an eight by an eight by ten or eight by eleven so box. You're, that's, you're really stepping up the game. Yeah, I, you I, know, just, I want to be able to display that show that I went to out your way last last fall. Um, I can't remember. Show out my way. Oh, in, in Belleville? It, the one at that at big the, hockey arena. Yeah, that was that was Toy Force. Okay. Quickie Toy, Toy Con. Someone was doing something like that, and that really impressed me that they were boxing and putting covers for even in the baggies and let you know what was what like so it's a, yeah. I, think, I think there's some value to that for sure so the guy that ran that his name is trevor and trevor was a marketing guy and he had this thing called toy force and he would do toy invasion okay. and he did he did um peterborough ajax um and um Belleville. He did okay. one in Kingston before it didn't do all that great. But um, and then he partnered up in 2019 with Brick Assembly and did the original Bricks in the Six. Okay. Then COVID hit. Yeah. And when COVID hit, he went back to school and got his teaching degree. Okay. And he started teaching. And he went, I don't want to do marketing anymore. And I don't want anything to do with Toy Force. But because he had taken money from everybody, he 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 either had to do the show or, or pay everybody back for the tables right. that, that he collected. And I don't think that he was able to do that because he had there was mar money that he had spent on advertising and all this, right? Oh, okay. So he had to he had to go through with the show. So he went through with the show. And after that, he basically just gave up on doing it. So then what he did was his shares in Brick Assembly for Bricks in the Six, he sold to Graham. Oh. And Graham is now the sole owner of Brick Assembly. Graham's, Graham's the Lego guy. He works for the Lego group. Yeah, yeah. Goes yeah, around and he, yeah. um, he's friends with Dave and he's friends with... Um, Nick, that won last season of Lego Masters, he's okay. really good friends with him, right? So, yeah. Um, but Dave's sister is supposed to be coming. Remember Dave that you had on, on the podcast and he yeah. went to, yeah, his sister's coming to Bricks in the Six. Okay. I don't know what day, though. Um, Nick is supposed to be coming as well. I think both days, but I'm not sure. Um, and apparently, when I was talking to Graham last, he said there are approximately 12 vendors. And of those 12 vendors, four or five of them are, they, 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 they do services like brick building camps and that kind of stuff, right? Okay. There's actually six or seven actual people selling and i don't know if if um brad is going this year or not yeah and i don't have i've reached out to him and that just you know that's a Who? brad a brad and then i'm just getting nowhere with that so i have well, no brad, idea brad only did one day last year he did this did the saturday but he didn't he did not do the sunday last time 
not last year, in 2019. I remember Brad being there, and he had his little um, uh, Battlestar Galactica mock. Yeah. Yeah, 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 he, he had those, those there. And, yeah, yeah, I remember him having those. And I, I honestly and, don't know how that went for him, but I, I mean, really he, but he's cut himself off from so many opportunities. So I just don't know. I really don't know if he's. Yeah. Now, I don't know if. I don't know if Bricks in the Six has become a uh, an actually an actual sanctioned Lego event. That'd be nice. Or if it's just, or if it's just an they can AFL. Make that happen. Well, yeah, I don't know if it's actually sanctioned by Lego or if it's just AFOL. You know, maybe, and if it isn't yet, maybe they just need to get a few more under their belt. Yeah. Oh boy, let's see. So. We're 1,200 plus out of 1,400 plus polls. Vallejo is ahead. Ooh, it's getting closer by 5,000 votes. Oh, my goodness. Jeez, we're going to know this in about 20 minutes. you got to love the modern counting systems. You know what sucks? Scarborough still has their polls open for another two or three minutes. This is what I hate about our elections in Canada. We shouldn't be showing anything until everyone's until had a chance. Polls. I really, and we do this, you know, the, the federal one, coast to coast. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Well, here, here's the thing that we always felt when we, when I lived in BC, what's the point of voting if it's all decided by South, uh, Southeastern Ontario? Yeah. Like, it, no, and, and I get it and I get that feeling and it's, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's frustrating for sure. And, and you know, I know people out in Alberta, they're frustrated with our side of the country because, yeah, we're making decisions for them. And Yeah. So I, did I tell you I picked up a couple of Disney sets? Uh, yeah, you were you're cleaning or prepping or counting or something, right? Want to see? Oh, ho, 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 ho. very nice. So I got that. And then the... Uh, you know there's a new the... castle coming, right? I know. I got the trait. Yeah, but I don't know if it's going to be like this one, right? It's it's, so, it's different with a different color scheme, I think. I don't think it's yeah. just the uh, repaint. I think they tweaked it a bit little. This one's got a lot of nuances. Like when you turn it around, you look in the back. There's there's the candlestick that's back there. There's mm -hmm. the clock from, from Beauty and the Beast. The rose is back there. Aladdin, uh, Sleeping Beauty's bedroom, Aladdin's lamp. Yeah. There's all kinds of these little details hidden in all the different corners of the of the thing. So um, did you build it or? No, okay, I got it. I, when I you, bought it, it was built. You bought it soon. But when I bought it, I bought it. I bought this and the train station with the train, and she didn't have the train, so I had to go back and get the train right. and the books. So I got, I got the book. I got both books. Okay. The train station's out on the, in the kitchen. So I got that. I got both. Now this one, a friend of mine said that she she said to me, "Hey, can you find me a Disney castle?" So there's that, wow. and I have a I have a box of '90s '90s aged comics, yeah. uh, Silver Age I think they are. Anyway, uh, 1990s comics, um, 150. Um, no, Chow's pulled ahead by a lot. Sorry, by eighteen thousand. Like oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like 150 Marvel and 60 DC comics sitting in a box that her, her husband's interested in. So I, I went and I priced them out, and I think there's probably about $300 worth of comics there, if not like more. In good condition or like kind of what Decent, I call yeah. loved, you know, well-read? <laughs> well, they're not – I mean, they're they're the kind of a comic that it's not a bad start, but when I, when I pick up a comic, I want to know that – Okay, it's not a mint condition comic. The cover's not falling off of it. Mm -hmm. It's in okay condition. I wouldn't be killing the comic if I read it. Yeah. And that's kind of where they're at. But the very first comic I pulled out of this thing is... Well, let's see if I can find it. Uh, ah. Here. I bet you're gonna be first moving out. First comic I pulled. Sorry, Greg, this one. What was that? I bet you're gonna be moving out. Toronto Chow wins. Oh, it's gonna be bad for us. And she's pulling ahead by even more. So that's uh, the McFarland Spider-Man series, and that's the silver cover version. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know how much that comic's worth? Uh, I want to say seventy-five. Raw? But I don't have a clue. 
fifty-five dollars raw. Really? Like that. Yeah. Okay. I paid hundred bucks for 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 two boxes. And I then I got. Re- I'm trying to remember how many gimmick versions there were of, of that issue. Two. Number one. Two. A two. Two. There okay. was a black cover and a and a silver. And the silver. Okay. Yeah. So then. Oh my goodness. That one. Spider Man Daredevil. <laughs> Spider Man 2099. You know what? See, I actually. I, a lot of people. Spider Man 2099. I like, I like the 2099 series of books, uh, but they were just not liked. They just weren't. So I got those, and then I'm going to put these back. I'll grab a couple of 2099. Uh, um. The Spider Man. I'm trying to remember the others now. I can't remember the others. It was four titles, I think, at launch. I mean, I applaud the effort, but it just wasn't great. Oh, my. Let's see. Okay, then, so they haven't conceded the race yet. Ever hear of X Factor? Yeah, yeah, X Factor. Yep. I have, I have probably. 20, yeah, 15 or 20 different X Factor uh, um, editions. Do you know what the first and, one you have? Do you know what the first and, issue is you have? No, I'd have to go and look, but I've got like, I, I'm looking at it going X Factor 45, X Factor 60, X Factor 45, 45, 50, 50, 45. Like, well, I got like four copies of one book. Yeah, I think Walter Simonson did the art for the first dozen or two dozen. Um, but yeah, I couldn't tell you for issue 45. Have you ever heard of Squadron Supreme? Yes. 12 issue limited series. The first one. All 12. You You got all 12? Yep. Wow, dude. You know what? Well, I mean, I think my mom has all the books, but it's like, I I think I know I I don't have them all. And I was, I think they're like two or Two to five dollars a piece. Okay. Right, and there's twelve. So I'm looking at like twenty. Well, at two bucks, there's they're they're twenty four. But I mean, I think they're probably closer to about four or five bucks a piece yeah. with the condition they're in. Right. I'm there's no major tears or limited rips. series. <laughs> so I'm looking anywhere from forty to sixty bucks for for these twelve comics as well. Right. Dude, so though, now I'm at having that whole nine, run though. See two. That's kind yeah, but of unique the, because you know what the print run changed, it because it was not popular, and, and they're not the new they're they're the direct version they're not the newsstand because yeah. there's no barcode. Yeah, yeah, comic book shop right? version. Um, well, that's another thing. Not all the books were released to the newsstands in the, you know during that era because right sometimes the content or whatever. Uh, yeah. So I've got. I got like almost 200 books, 200 comic books in this box, and I paid $100 for them. Wow. But, but that's probably th- having that single run. That's books. really nice. Like, I probably wouldn't want to break it unless I'm getting some the silver value. The, the, the 12 issue series. Oh, yeah. No, no. They're, they'll, go as a, they'll go as a lot. Yeah. Right. As once you break that lot, that value is not there. It just yeah. Said, my my it's friend's very wife. If you're, title yeah my friend's wife wants to know how much i want for all of them so i sat down with mike up in belleville yeah a couple weeks ago and we went through them all and i went up there went up there with all of my spare minifigures and everything that i had all my parts and he busted out all his stuff we just sat down and we went through comics for a little bit and then he's like hey do you have this dig through my stuff here you go I'm like, I need a helmet for this. And he gave me that. And I'm like, I need this. You need that. Da, da, da. And we just swap back and forth and put together a bunch of minifigures from our spare parts. Nice. So, but uh, I was I was on Instagram today and I saw a video that I shared with uh, my kid. This guy down somewhere in the States or something. He had, oh, what it had to have been 30, 32 by 32 um uh, uh, base plates what laid color? out. Oh, uh, various colors. Okay, but they were full of minifigs. Oh, okay. Seventeen thousand Star Wars minifigs. Oh, dude. Uh, Stud had over Stud City. Yeah, yeah, that's who. Uh, because you know he, what? His he's uncle. Got like, 
His uncle has bankrolled that entire collection you see in his garage and outside of his garage. Yeah. I think that's the, the video. He's got over 400 uh, 501st uh, stormtrooper or clone troopers. Yeah, the kid, the kid's for real. The collection's for real. Who it's huge. owns it? I'm pretty sure the uncle, but whatever. Um, I actually yeah. had him on my stream once or twice, and I was oh, yeah? on. And when he was in college or university, I was on one of his. Um, he's out now. I think he went to law school or something. Um, yeah, he was definitely living the life. Yeah, the stud, girls in the his stud place city. He was having a fun night. Stud, yes, that city. Nice guy. Um, massive amounts of Lego, just ridiculous amounts. Yeah, there's got to be there's got to be 70, 70 to eighty base plates laying in his driveway. Yeah, full of minifigures. I'm. I sent a message to to Mitch, my my son in law, and they go. I don't know. After I watch this, I think I might have to give up my title, the Lord. <laughs> I, I, I can't compete. No, it's it, it's funny, you know, when he was in school, and he'd be doing big shopping hauls, you know, and it's like, and for any kid his age, it's it was impressive. But you're only talking like he was able to buy whatever the new wave was or whatever, right? And then when he got home from university and he started doing videos from home. And he started pulling out like all these ships in one video and all of this ship in that video. It's like, and all these TIE fighters and all these X wings. And it's like, dear God, what are you doing with so many of these things? But, right. um, hey, you know, people spend their money in different ways. Some people buy Lamborghinis, some buy yeah. excessive amounts of Lego. And it's like, wow. Yeah. Incredible. Yep, yep. <clears throat> but yeah, I, oh. I, I I've honestly not seen anyone, you know, exceed what he shows off. And but talking about talking about like what you have for inventory, I was sitting there and I like I said, I've been uh, I've been adding to the inventory for bricks in the six that's yep. coming right. And uh, um, when did I start doing it? I had I woke up really really early and i just started thinking about i gotta get that stuff processed because it was sitting on the kitchen table yeah so then um we went out for mitch's birth oh no what was it i was i just wasn't feeling all that great i'd been up really late i couldn't sleep the death that day um the next day my shoulder was killing me and i just started plunking away because i didn't want to go anywhere or do anything i think it was friday thursday and I just started processing. I just started going through and um, putting the, and it was just real easy. All I did was I took the stuff that was already in the inventory. And then the stuff that was, I had stuff that I would take to shows that wasn't in the Bricklink in inventory. Mm -hmm. So I boxed it and I put, uh, I taped the pictures to the outside and all that. And then I would put it in the inventory. But before I started, I looked at what the value of my inventory was. Well, we lost somebody. I bounced them down. Nothing was happening. Oh. And... Okay. Um, so I would look at, I looked at what my inventory value was retail and it was at like 11 and a half grand. So then uh, I started adding all my stuff and we're talking like I added um, a couple of Ninjago sets worth a hundred bucks, but I, we went out for Mitch's birthday on Saturday and I came home and I had indigestion. I like, I, just could not sleep. I wasn't feeling well. I was up till probably three in the morning processing. Just mm -hmm. um, stuff was bagged. Um, I wasn't tearing stuff down. I had done. I did some of that yesterday. Well, that was Mitch's birthday. We got home. Yeah, I did. I I, I pulled a couple of sets out of my out of my inventory. Uh, where were they? They were. Uh, try, um, oh, they were on this shelf right here. Yeah, where the okay. So I took down the Wookie gunship, and what else did I do? Oh, that's still I took one. Down, I don't have the figs for it. It kills me. Kylo Wookie Ren's Wookie gunship. I had Kylo Ren's um, the first Kylo Kylo Ren shuttle shuttle command shuttle. I processed, I took, I broke that down. And then 
up top where the X-Wing is, up there. Yep. There's a space next to it that's empty, like right there. Yep. So what's missing? That was Poe po Dameron's oh, X-Wing. Po Dam X-Wing. Okay. So I'm starting to pare down on what my what my collection consists of. It's starting. To, I'm slowly starting to get rid of um, some of the Star Wars stuff, like the yeah. ships and whatnot. Um, I'm going to probably keep original trilogy stuff. So probably keep my Dagobah, Dagobah X-Wing. I'll keep my Slave One, Millennium Falcon, Vader's TIE Fighter. Um, and this, this here, right there. Yep. Get it. Zoom in there. <laughs> With the, uh, uh, that one there. The, uh, the episode three, um, Revenge of the Sith, where they were attacking Grievous's ship and all the buzz droids tore up the, the Jedi interceptors. Yes. Yeah. I, I kind of like that scene, so I'm uh, I'm probably I like the keep scene. That. I don't like the Jedi interceptors. I don't like Yoda's like uh, ship. Um, yeah. I've got the original. I don't want the new one. Um, I keep <laughs> just, tearing it down myself, but my I, wife I, just I, sent I can't me a picture. Bear to sell my collection, but maybe someday. Mike, I'm going to send you a pit a, 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 a something on Facebook here. And or sorry, not my um <laughs> Richard. It's Damn okay. it, hang on. Oh there. boy. Okay, so some of these guys are conceding the low ends. Like, yeah, I mean Fury's at thirty thousand votes, so he knows he doesn't have a chance, so he's conceding. I don't know why that said. They haven't called it yet. There's still over a hundred polls, and there's enough that Vallejo could pull out. Saunders can't, of course. He's out. So my guy's out. Uh, sixteen. Wow, sixteen thousand votes. It could still happen in the last hundred plus polls, but that'd be a tough one. Man, we're gonna be so screwed if she gets it. So I just sent you a picture of that my wife took out the front door or the front window. Oh, on what? Um, Instagram? No, on Facebook. On Facebook? Okay. Yeah, Whoops. Messenger. Let's see. <laughs> she says, it's a double. Oh, I got to switch accounts. Let's see. Oh, how do I... Do this. I don't think it'll work. I got to figure it out. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh, there we go. Wow. Oh, I love that rainbow. Double rainbow. Wait a second. Did I not just see this? Did you not post this somewhere? No, she just, oh. she just sent that. Okay, to me. everyone is showing me rainbows then. Okay, because I go, man, it seems super familiar. But yeah, that's a great shot, eh? Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, good Double show. rainbow. And uh, she hasn't been doing any of that stuff for anybody that's watching. Like the guy in the park in Yellowstone or whatever it was a bunch of years ago. So, hey, back Jamie. to my story. I processed a ton of stuff, right? And... Um, I, I go through and I add in all these sets that I finally get completed that were sitting in my room and like I've got just tons of stuff, right? Yeah. All this. So um like the Carnage head that I picked up or Carnage Master I picked up a little while ago that I showed you the last time I was on, right? Yeah. On uh, New Breaks. And uh so Add all this stuff in. I've got, I got the two Disney sets to put in. I've got the first order troop transport that I'm working on right now to break down and and get put in there. But other than that, there's really not a lot of stuff that I'm looking at putting into the store right now. 
Um, <laughs> the value in the store went from 11 and a half to 16,000. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I think I got a little bit of inventory, but mind you, there were, there were three boxes of stuff that I had sitting here. Oh, you pulled um, stuff out of inventory for the show, right? Or well, no, is that I not just how you're doing it? No, I had, I had, hadn't processed. I, I basically just take my whole store and okay. set it up in a physical location. But okay. I've shut the store for the summer, right? I'm like, right. I'm not doing okay. the store for the summer. We'll look at it in the fall. Um, but uh, yeah, I've got a, I got a blacksmithing demo to do uh, up in just south of Canada next weekend. Um, next weekend, weekend after, I'll be going up on like the sixth. And then, uh, um, yeah, I'm going to my buddy's place to help him get his motorcycle running on the 6th. And then on the 7th, I'll be setting up at the, the site. And the, the show, is, the demo is actually on the 8th. So I'll do that next uh, two weeks from now. Okay. Or a week and a half, whatever. And then uh, I'll back for a week. And then I'm down to Toronto or Mississauga for... Bricks in the sixth on Saturday the twenty second morning of the twenty second. We'll drive up really really early. <clears throat> you know what I saw? There is you know the the um, the orange or the the uh, Lego stud separator the Lego yeah. separators. Yeah. There's one that you can. There's a really wide one you can get. Yeah, but if you well, well the art yeah. the art sets come with the wide one that's four or six studs wide, on right? The end. Yeah, I saw a guy using that to place stickers. It yeah. was absolutely epic. Yeah, it's not bad, especially for the large ones like the uh, plaque stickers. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, so basically, bricks in the six. Come down, buy some stuff on the twentieth. Where you go. You got your ticket already? No. I, I, when they first put it up and they were using what was it, Eventbrite or whatever, I whined and yeah. bitched. And I I I do not like that company. <laughs> I let everyone know I'm not happy with Eventbrite. Um, well, it's better than Ticketmaster. More and more, it, well, more and more people are using Eventbrite. It's the way everyone's going. Um, yeah. You know, I'm not oblivious to that. But by the same token at the time, the idea of committing to a time, it, it, I just want to be able to, when I get there, I get there and I'm going in, but, um, yeah. Um, but yeah, that whole event bright with, thing put a yeah. sour taste in my mouth. I was not happy about that originally, but I said, I had no problem promoting it and putting it in the group. And I think Jeff posted in, um, uh, the Bricklink group. Um, yeah. And, you know, and I'll do whatever I can. I, I don't mind. And guys, you guys can post every day, make a new post, whatever. You know, yeah. I don't stop anyone from, you know, posting their stuff. Go for it. February. Um, so February of 2019, they pre-sold 49 tickets for the show. This year, in mid-February, they had uh, sold 300 tickets. Nice. Um, let's see. I talked to him June 14th. He was down in Chicago at Brick World. Uh, must be yeah. must be it's rough 20, when your your work sends you to oh. <laughs> sends you to Brick World. <laughs> um, they've got over a thousand tickets sold already for the for the event. Wow. Well, I definitely want it to be a success. I mean, when we lost BrickFet, and I love BrickFet. Um, right. I mean, that was huge for the city, and I just never what understood. Was BrickFet? BrickFet was, um, oh, Jesus, Mississauga. Not Mississauga. The Kennedy Road at the hotel. Um, okay. And I can't remember who was running I'm that. Not familiar with it. Oh, it was a big show. Um, really big show. How long ago? 
Wow. Because um, I didn't. The I last didn't get back one would have been until, like sixteen, maybe. Yeah. See, I didn't get back into Lego. Like, I didn't start doing anything with Lego on this scale. For the guy who ran Lasting Toys was one of the two or three guys behind yeah. Brickfet. I didn't come back to Lego good, until twenty eighteen. Okay. Um, I picked up a set in twenty eighteen. I ran down to um, early twenty eighteen. I ran down to Belleville with uh, my buddy Travis, and he bought a he bought a figure off of Mike. Okay. And uh, then I went up to Ajax to check out this the whole thing and everything, and uh, that would have been. Ooh. Me? Oh no! It looks like she something? looks like Anna. It looks like Anna's about to concede. <clears throat> Shoot! And then I I I just started buying stuff from from May through to end of August or so, and then like on the fifth or seventh of September, I did my first show here in Kingston. Right. And then I I. Kind of started setting up my, I set up my, my BrickLink store, but didn't do a whole lot with it. And then in spring of, was it spring? No. Oh, maybe it was. I can't remember if it went. Maybe it was. I did the Peterborough show. In fall of yeah i think i did kingston and peterborough, peterborough and then i shut it down for the for the year and then in 2019 is when i really started going hard at it i did ajax and belleville and and so once you had a little uh, taste of it then you figured out how to do it yeah I, I i did i did the shows that he did in eastern well i did all of toy force shows because he didn't go back to peterborough and he didn't do kingston so i did Ajax, Belleville, Ajax, Bricks in the Six. Um, and I did I did a few uh did a few shows with uh Dave from Pop Culture. But um his stuff it, it, like it's just he doesn't advertise and you don't get the people and um was he the one I that had, did that terrible show downtown? No, that's somebody oh, else. Oh that was someone else. I don't know. He picked that guy picked my card up at uh the Star Wars Con. Star Wars convention last year and invited me down to to this thing and he told me it was a it was a um a collectible a, no he said he's he had a convention going on and wanted to know if I wanted to be a vendor at it and yeah like, we okay, both sure. know we both know what happened with that that was just yeah and basically uh, it was a, it was a cosplay thing is what he what he had to drop the thing. yeah because that other so, room I mean at least there was someone in there but it's like yeah, that was just that was all the beers. that was the room that they did all their panels in, right? Yeah. They had a few artists in there, but it was all. My daughter all went panels. in there and like she learned how to do a little thing with the costumes and. Yeah, that's, so that's she actually the whole liked piece the it was top there. The bottom, but yeah, it's. It was definitely not a show for somebody that wanted to go and sell stuff. Yeah, because it wasn't promoted like that. No. So yeah. you you and me promoted it more than that gentleman did. Which is sad. Yeah. yeah. Which is really, really sad. And I've heard nothing back from him since. And uh, yeah. <laughs> well, the <a> shame alone. <laughs> yeah. So, but um, anybody that's around Kingston, Belleville, Coburg area, um, we've got Bricks in the Six on the weekend of the 20th, 22nd, 23rd. And then on the weekend of the 30th is. Um, the summer Belleville Toy Show, June thirtieth at the um, at the Masons Hall in Belleville. Okay. And Mike's running that one. And then we're looking at maybe if we can do it logistically, maybe doing something in the fall here in Kingston. Maybe I don't know. Hopefully, I'll have my new wheels by then. I, I was pushing oh. my wife. I go, "Will you please?" Call Toyota and find out where my car is. <laughs> Are you ordered? Well, I mean, well, yeah, we, we committed to it in February, and they told us, you know, it's probably going to be six to nine months, and What'd we you knew order? that. Uh, another Rav. Oh yeah. 
Yeah. I called my my dad. My dad got a settlement from from Veterans Affairs for um for his, what did he get? His knees and his hearing from twenty eight years working in the in the Air Force, right? Around jet engines and stuff like that. So um, they gave him a settlement for injuries and damages and blah blah blah. Anyway. So after he gets this uh, this settlement, he wants to go and buy a new vehicle. He says, "Oh, I think I'm, I might look at a Toyota Sienna." Well, my brother-in-law oh, works man. at yeah. Toyota in our hometown where my dad is, and I said, "Hey, my dad's in the market for a Sienna, um, but every Sienna that he sees is a uh, it's an off lease that this guy has, um, or it's a it's it's a secondhand car. So this guy goes in and he buys a Sienna." And the guy's business, he gets paid by the hospital on a contract to drive the cancer patients 200 kilometers down to Victoria for their treatments and then bring them back. So he runs a shuttle wow. okay. every day, every day, five days a week, 200 kilometers down, 200 kilometers back. They so don't have a like, program that already does this for the people? That's what's that? They don't have a service already? Like that's the service. He gets contracted by uh oh, the BC government? Med. Oh yeah. okay. He's contracted by BC Med. Okay. To to make that run. So that's cool. Um well, yeah. The uh, the guy started out with his son. I knew his son. I used to hang out with his son um back in the early nineties and he came up with this idea because I mean we, I come from a fairly small town. There's the whole valley is like sixty thousand people. The whole valley. When I moved there, our main town was like 10,000 people in, in the main bigger city, right? Right. So there was 10,000 10, in Courtney, probably about five or 6,000 in Comox. There was about 3,000 in the town that my wife was my wife grew up in. And then in the surrounding farmland area, there was probably another four or 5,000 people kind of thing. So there wasn't a lot of people in our general area. And then the fishing village had probably another couple thousand people so from the from where the valley started to where it ended the whole strathcona district and everything there's probably sixty thousand people okay now there's now there's somewhere around thirty thousand in the city so um in uh in the early 90s this guy that i knew named hey howdy shazam howdy this guy stewart and his dad started this service because we had one really big nightclub and it was this huge it was like it was like the size of a barn it was the largest single structure move that they ever did when they moved it from comox down to where it is right now um and opened it as a reopened it as a bar it was called the loft okay huge huge bar uh it took them three days to move it and everything so the loft cabaret moved and they put it in behind this this hotel and this guy that owned it anyway um because it was the main place to go there was two nightclubs basically and a couple of pubs around town but um at the end of the night when you left there was probably only i'd say there's four cabs in the whole town four taxis okay. and two would be at two would be at um the, the nightclub downtown it was called jiggers okay <laughs> so it would be down at, at down by the bridge at jiggers or and two would be sitting at the loft because the pubs the pubs closed at midnight but the nightclubs they could close at two so at two o'clock in the morning there's only two cabs at this one nightclub so Stuart and his dad start this business and they call it designated drivers and right. for a flat fee of twenty dollars, they will drive you and your car home. Really, that yep. is cool. So, because that's the one thing everyone hates is it, you know you want to be responsible, but you still don't want to right. leave your car. You because know? and the way they priced it was well, it costs you ten dollars to take a cab, and then you got to take take a cab back the next day and get your car, but you're feeling like crap. So, you pay us twenty bucks and. You give my son consent to drive your car home, and I will drive you in my car. So they started with their own personal vehicle that they turned into this business thing. Well, then that evolved into this 
this courier service, people courier service. So, um, so then they end up with this contract to drive people to the cancer treatments in Victoria. So they're doing 400 kilometers a day, five days a week. That's 2000 kilometers a week. So right. every single Toyota, Toyota Sienna that's in the Valley that's been traded in has like 150,000 kilometers on a, on a 2019 vehicle. <laughs> right. Cause you're doing 2000 kilometers a week by, by 52 weeks. Yeah. Right. That adds up fast. No, that's, so, that's pretty cool. So my, I mean, that's thinking outside the box. That's a pretty cool service. Yeah. Yep. So what, it was a really good idea. So, but, uh, yeah. So anyway, I made a mistake. When my dad was looking, my dad was looking for a Sienna and I, I called my, my brother-in-law and I'm like, dad's looking for a Sienna. And he goes, yeah, if you're looking for a new one to order one from the factory, it's an 18 month wait. Ouch. Yeah. So. Well, it's like we wanted the hybrid and they said at that time, 12 to 18 months. It's like, okay, well, that's not going to work for me. So I'll just take the regular gas guzzler. Oh, that'll be six to nine months. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But yep. Yeah, that's. Uh, it, it, it's funny. So the day we went in February, they had only two cars in, in biggest Toyota in Toronto, right? They only had right. two cars in the showroom. That's how bad things were. Oh. And um, na only now, I think they got six or eight. Like. They're just having huge problems getting stuff in. Now, the thing is, they desperately want my five-year-old car. They're giving great money for it because they're going to make mad money on the used cars because they, you know, they have value and they retain value. Um, they actually offered us money for the used, for my car. Now, because the idea is sell them this. They said, well, sell it to us now. It's like, well, no, I still need to drive, you know. Yeah. They're so desperate to get their hands on that car. My buddy that I play hockey with. Okay, so I play hockey with four guys that work at the Ford dealership down the road here. Mm -hmm. My buddy Tyler keeps going, you know, you could get good money trading your vehicle in. Mm -hmm. I said, what am I going to do? He goes, well, you, you buy a new one. You don't have to worry about all the little problems or anything. I said, you know, you're a pretty good salesman, but here's the problem. I said, if I sell, if I trip, if I take my vehicle to you and, and yeah, I paid 27 grand for my vehicle plus tax and blah, blah, blah. And, mm -hmm. and I get 30 for it because the market's so hot right now. Yeah. What do I drive? What, well, what no, do that's I it. drive? Yeah. And he's like, well, you buy a new truck. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I take my $30,000 that you give me and I put that into another truck. But if I buy a new truck, I have to finance 60 because new trucks are eighty-five or ninety thousand dollars, and you get that new truck. It's a target. But and I'm sitting there going, "Here's the thing, though." He goes, "Yeah, but you." I said, "The thing that you're not considering is the one thing you can't take away from me is the fact that my truck right now has no payment." Yeah, I paid cash for my truck. I walked in and paid for it outright. Yeah. So. How are you going to convince me to go from not having a truck payment with a truck that's still in really good shape to getting a truck where I have to take on a payment? Yeah. The only way that I would ever, ever possibly do that is if I turn around and I trade my truck in on another truck that is for my black for a black if i establish my blacksmithing business and then i'm like that's another reason why i don't want to get rid of the truck is because how am i going to move steel how do i ever go and pick up steel and move anything if i get a small they're like well sell the truck and get the car if you're selling your boat blah 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 i'm like right but how do i go and i pick up a load of steel yeah. like you don't want to give up that flatbed yeah so or even if i have to Put a trailer on it, right? I'm not pulling a trailer of my Mazda three, that's for sure. 
So, well, you've got a sunken driveway, right? Yeah. Trailers aren't fun for you. I mean, no. I guess it's not a real issue. It's not that bad. Well, my my utility trailer I keep on the side, on on this side behind me. Like my driveway is over that way, right? Yeah. So front main roads that way, out the front, and then that way is the driveway, and it goes down under the under the, the living room, and then on this side of the property line, my neighbor where my neighbor's driveway is, he's got. Uh, covered trailer and a utility trailer and I put mine right there on the grass beside his okay his stuff so it just all looks like it blends in there it's not okay. nicer and then on the driveway back right up to the pony wall almost is my boat and then it, with about eight inches to spare you can snug the I've got a stack of cones in front of the the, the hitch so we can pull the car in till it just about touches the cones. Right. And we're off the street by about six and in, six, eight inches with the oh, car. Nice. nice. So in the winter time, the boat goes out to my buddy's farm. My truck ends up on the far side and the car ends up on the close side. Okay. And then my that buddy did something cool with cones. And I was really impressed because um, his truck, of course, he can't see, you know, how close he is to the wall. So he got himself two cones, uh, two old hockey sticks, and uh, I can't remember if it was tennis balls. No, it was something else. But this way, he can hit the cone, the bumper hits the cone, and then when he sees the movement, he knows he's good. Oh, yeah. So he can get his truck, like, and it, it allows him two inches to close his door. But it, it works, you know. Oh, in the garage? Hard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll snug it as tight as they can, and yeah, then they hang yeah. They well, hang a big tennis ball on a string. Extended back, so he he was really tight yeah. in his face. Oh. Okay, I'm shutting down the stream. Thanks for hanging Wait. with me. We're out of here. Bricks in the six. Bricks in the six. Uh, July twentieth to the twenty fourth. All right, we got it in. All right, Eventbrite. Go to go to Eventbrite. Get your tickets. Eventbrite. Get your tickets. Peace. Later.